Welcome back to Four Against Darkness. This is uh, going to be the first, I guess, like campaign module, whatever you want to call it. They On the front, right, uh, it says a solitaire adventure for Four Against Darkness recommended for characters of levels 1 to 2. So we, uh, I finally figured out the way to do this, I think, right? If you go to the Four Against Darkness page here on Board Game Geek and click on Expansions, you go all the way to the bottom and you jump down to page 5 and you scroll to the bottom of that you can, in reverse order, see, like, the releases. And so I think that's, like, probably just maybe the best way to do it, I guess. I don't know. So here is Caves of the Kobold Slave Masters. And then you have the fun time of trying to find it, right? So it has its own little page on Board Game Geek here. There's not a whole lot of conversation here. There are 14 total threads here. Uh, so I imagine that most everybody's doing their, their com you know, they're their conversing about Four Against Darkness here with, uh, you know, <laughs> 1,400 times, uh, or 1,400 uh, uh, threads. So anyway, this does exist. You can find it, but I, to save my life, maybe my account had some kind of a restriction on it or something to where it's like on safe search mode or something, but I couldn't find this. I would type this in to drive through RPG and nothing comes up. I get a whole bunch of other garbage. If you go to Google, type in the name, Caves of the Kobold, Slave Masters, it's the first hit on Google, and it's only $2 to go ahead and get the PDF, so you don't have to print it out. I didn't know what I was in for, so I thought, well, I'll buy this. It says it's only 21 pages. Let's print it out, and I'll read it, to, uh, well, last night. And then I'll, uh, I'll I'll read the little book here, and then I'll just uh, you know play it. Well, I got through like the first page and realized you don't just read this. You know, I thought for some reason it was going to add new rules and change the dungeon I was creating and all that good stuff. I couldn't have been more wrong. You read one page and it tells you, okay, don't no, maybe two pages. Yeah, two no, one page, <laughs> and then you and then and it literally tells you to stop. And do not read any more until you're playing. So I was like, oh, well, I've got this, you know, garbage little printed out version here, but that's okay because I, I realized something. So this is only $2. You can see that Caverns of Chaos is only $2. You've got uh, Fiendish Foes over here, which is also only $2. You've got Buried Secrets, which is only $3. These are all very inexpensive, and I don't want to put the PDF up on the screen uh, because it would be just too easy to copy and essentially, you know, not I, 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 like like pirate a copy of it if I was to put the uh, the PDFs on the screen. So I don't I don't think I want to do that. So I think it was a good thing that I had the printed copy. And then I come to find out it looks completely different. So see this in here? Oh no, you probably can't. There is a map. There is a map. And so what I've done. I've drawn the map here on this board so that we can play and you don't have to like keep looking at a PDF or anything. So what I'm gonna do is this here. Let me pull up the uh, the PDF and let's just see. Boom, there it is. So then I have this guy. This is the PDF that you get for your $2, Caves of the Kobold Slave Masters, right? And you have page one, which doesn't really say a whole lot, but it tells you, you know, who created it, who did the illustrations and whatnot. Great. Here's a table of contents. Also great. This is essentially this in page four, which is the map, right? So there, there it is. Take it all in. Look at my amazing artwork <laughs> of, of, of the map here. I just, I figured it would be easier to see if I did the map on, you know, kind of the same thing I had been doing before. I got, uh, I got some color. I got some little trees down here. I got some blue water. I thought it would be a fun idea. Uh, but then this is really the only page I think that I'm going to put on the screen because everything else you could screenshot it and then like, you know, I don't want to use the word steal the adventure essentially, but like, you know, you, you're, you wouldn't be paying the, the big whole $2 to run the adventure yourself and have the, the content that, you know, they deserve money for for creating this product that we all want. So I, I'm not going to do that, right? Uh, it's one thing when it's like a 90 page book. Look, if you're putting in the time and effort to, to go frame by frame to steal that, Maybe you need to see it, save that eight bucks, like that bad, okay? But but like a, a twenty page thing that'll take five minutes of effort. To, I don't think that I'm I'm cool being the one to put that all on a screen. If this is a if this is a pay money for a product, this is not a free thing, okay? So I'm going to be reading out of this book and using that. There's tables in this book that change the tables in the base four against darkness, and so I'm going to have to use my little copy here as opposed to pulling up the whole thing on the screen for you. It's just it's just how I feel about it, okay? So, this is a little different, and here's the little the little bit we have to read here. This adventure to for four against darkness can be played in a couple of hours and split over three separate sessions. It has been designed for beginning characters. Most of your characters should be level one or two. So we're going to bring in our level one characters from the last little adventure when it was a random map, and I got uh, we had the rogue killed by the chaos lord trying to escape, and then we had like uh, 
goblin vermlings or so what or, or, or go, whatever they were the little guys they, they they killed the mage after that and then you know we grabbed the uh fireball scroll and ran out of the dungeon there with no lanterns because those were the two lantern bears <laughs> uh so then we, we we met their twin sisters and we brought them in with us and we handed the mage the scroll of fireball so really we have all first level characters here we're gonna bring the same party in the only thing that makes this party not just brand new is that the dwarf has one clue we have a scroll of fireball here and they have killed three minions so that's not much of a of a thing right like they've killed orcs orcs and uh orcs it was goblin swarmlings that killed the mage so they have killed orcs orcs and orcs it looks like so this is this is team orc slayer going in now to slay some kobolds which is great all right uh, however, if two or more characters are level 3, increase the chance of wandering monsters to 2 and 6 and increase the number of all minions encountered by 1. The 4 Against Darkness book is needed to play this adventure, which, you know, as we know, we obviously have that. But I'm going to end up using the PDF for that, I think, right here. Because, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll pull this up on the screen, but I think I'm going to try to keep the other one off screen. And I, I can actually see it from where I'm sitting. So I can pull the PDF up and look at, like, the charts if I need to. But again, I, I, I printed it for some reason, I guess. I don't know. I like having physical copies of the stuff. So, so there's there's that. Oops, I got rid of the page we were on. So here it is again. Okay. Uh, this adventure is in three parts. The first is a programmed dungeon. The second is a random dungeon using the standard dungeon building tables found in Four Against Darkness, but replacing the room content tables with those from this book. The third is an abstract battle. So that's that's really cool, right? Like I think I think that's what I like. I got lucky and kind of realized right away that like, wow, that, that dungeon crawling thing, that system mostly works. I, I maintain, I feel like this book needs a serious, it needs a design document and a, and a list of standards to to have a like second edition rewrite is what I feel, but that's just my opinion. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. In, in, in part one, use the map of the caves. That's what we've got here. You'll find the numbered locations in chapter one. Do not start reading until your party is created and ready to go. Follow the layout of that map, decide which location you are going to visit, and read the entry corresponding to that number. You may skip a room that is behind a door, including the two entry rooms that do not have... Sorry. That do not have a door. That's my, that's my alarm. Uh, you may skip a room that is behind a door, including two entry rooms that do not have a door, until you decide to enter that room at a later time. You may search rooms only if instructed to do so by the numbered entry. So no searching. Okay, we got to remember that. Do not read the entries in advance. Right, and this is where I was reading this going, oh, okay then, I guess my reading for the evening is done and we're just going to have to do it live and figure this out. Uh, read them only as you reach the room or area. Reading the Entries in advance will spoil all the fun, and I'm all about that. I love the surprise and the exploration, so that's, that's I think, why I love the randomness of it, is not knowing what room you go into, you know, wh whatever it is that you're playing. 2d6 dungeon, uh, 4 against darkness, d100 dungeon, I love not knowing, right? When you have this, uh, I mean, you still don't know, but... If you had this and you and you were you were I don't know I, I don't know I think this is super cool is what I think is I, I actually think this is pretty awesome but at least but but I know the layout so without a story this is less good but because this has story I think it's awesome I think I think this is actually probably really where this is going to shine uh, reading the entries in advance will uh, in advance will spoil all the fun when you trace your way back out of the dungeon make a wandering monster roll for each numbered location you move through the chance to meet a wandering monster is one in six. To determine what wandering monsters are met in chapter 1 and 2, roll d6. On a 1 through 3, use the Kobold Caves Vermin table on page 20. That's in the back here. On a 4 through 6, roll the Demonic Minion tables on page 18. And so I wrote this here, hoping to God I remember that, it, that that's the one like major rule change. Now, the other weird thing I want to point out is when you trace your way back out of the dungeon. So I'm having a hard time grasping that just on its like face value, right? So if we enter the dungeon in area 1, isn't this just area 1? That's associated with the door, I believe, and I imagine this is associated with, with, this is a bridge, right? This is probably in front of that room, and this is in front of that room, I, I, I think, anyway. So wouldn't I just go, like, couldn't I just do number one, number seven, number 15, number nine, number 14, number 12, number seven, number one, and be out of here? It, it, like, I don't understand, so I don't know, or like, and, and, and when it says tracing my way out, I assume that's, I would hit, ran, uh, you know, wandering monsters, wandering monsters, wandering monsters, and then out maybe? Well, the one isn't really here. If you look at their version of this map, uh, here, 
it's on the bottom. It's already when you're out. So I'm not actually even sure. I put it here just because it didn't fit on my screen, right? Uh, so I'm not I'm not 100% sure how the Wandering Monster things actually works in this. Like how many you have to fight or how many times you would have to roll. When you trace your way back out of the dungeon, make a Wandering Monster roll once for each numbered location you move through. So what I could do, I suppose, is, is... I mean, like, that sounds like if I don't hit every room and then hit here and then go back out, I would go down the middle. What if I went up the right-hand side because, you know, you can't go wrong if you go right. <laughs> right? If I go up this side and then I hop over here and come down that side, I'm rolling wandering monsters for each room. I mean, I guess maybe that's how that is is supposed to be set up. So I don't know. But now the next part of this, I don't want to put the thing on 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 screen here just because it's it's where all the story is. You right? So I don't I don't a I, I feel like it would just be too easy to just copy it all and then you would have yourself a like, you know, bootleg copy of of this little book or whatever. It's only two dollars, okay. Um but I still, you know, don't think that that should be something that somebody just takes and, and you know, steals a copy of or whatever, right? And makes a copy of. Okay, so steal is not the right word, right? Uh, uh, get it, get them, get themselves a, a less legitimate copy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the little first section here, uh, chapter one. So we don't need to have the map up here anymore because we have this map. The kobold slave masters are a plague upon the lands, capturing goblins and other creatures. Recently, they have even captured Elvin, an old, much-loved adventurer who started to police their area, wanting to put wrongs to right. However, in a new development, an escaped goblin has revealed the location where the kobolds keep Elvin. The town council has hired a party of four adventurers, yes, that's your party, to rescue Elvin. I think that's the name, is Elvin. It's E-L-V-Y-N. L. E-L, right? L Vin, V Y N, L Vin. Your party will be paid 100 gold pieces if you can return Elvin safely to town before nightfall. It would also be great if you could discover why the kobolds are acting so aggressively of late. Your party enters the map at section 1. And that's it. The very next sections are like, here's section 1, here's section 2, here's section 3. So that's all, that's the setup, right? So, so we enter section 1 and we need to read what happens here. Um, but before we do that... Let's let's just kind of like analyze here for a second, right? So there was there was a there was a this is the kobold slave masters. A goblin escaped from here, and we're missing a much loved adventurer who started to police their area named Elvin. Uh, and um, the 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 the, the it basically says go get him, but we could also discover why the kobolds are acting so aggressively. So you know who knows? I mean, maybe they maybe Cthulhu's hiding out in one of these rooms here, and he's 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 making them do their bidding. These kobolds or whatever. So who knows? Very exciting stuff. But we're gonna take a quick break, I think, here, just so I have a nice clean cut at some point before we actually start the adventure. Uh, it makes a good little timestamp in the uh, YouTube uh, video description for me. It makes it easy to find too. So I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> All right, it's time to get started. So real quick, if you're just joining us, the party that we're bringing in here only has uh, three minion kills under their belt. The mage has a scroll of fireball, and the dwarf has one clue. They are all level one. They just they were they were just the characters I was playing through the last like random dungeon before we had to hightail it out of there uh, because we got murdered by a chaos lord. <laughs> um, and I, I just I think it was for the sake of this, it was just easy to keep the same characters, not make all new characters. And the only other thing before we get to turn one here. Um, is if I catch a either a mistake or something that I'm not so sure about and I have to make a call and I make the wrong call, uh, right or wrong, I usually put it in the Klingon subtitles. So go ahead and turn those on. Sometimes I put stuff in there. I will also generally put things in the description of the video, but, but that seems to get overlooked all the time. I can't tell you how many times I put like a, oh, uh, you know, I forgot to add a plus one to this. And then like, there's comments that are saying, oh, hey, you didn't add a plus one to that. Well, I know that, right? Because it was in the comments, so save yourself the agony. Uh, maybe it was on the Klingon subtitles. <laughs> uh, you don't, uh, I, I know I miss a lot of things, and so I appreciate it when rules are corrected and whatnot. And sometimes I don't know how the rule works. Like, I think, I'm pretty sure now I understand that, like, on the fireball, if you roll a one, it is a whiff. Like, it is a fizzled spell, right? It is not going to do a minimum of one damage. I think I, I figured that out after I recorded it and thought, oh, well, it says to a minimum of one. I think what that meant is if it hits a one would mean it didn't hit but if it hits you take that number minus their level to a minimum of one damage right so i think i messed that up when i did that the other day and then um on the second video i did i think i messed that up for sure and then the one i'm still not 100 sure about is when you're withdrawing from a room 
do you have to roll for wandering monsters? So if we're in like room 13 and we come out of here, do we roll for wandering monsters? I have no idea. I couldn't find it anywhere in any of the books. So uh, maybe somebody knows a definitive answer and can, can show me in text somewhere where it's written. Um, because otherwise the rule is just in a place you've been before. Well, that makes sense because we were there before. So I guess if just that's the only place and way that it's written, that must be how it is. You just have to roll. But that makes no sense to me if you open the door, get hit in the face by a fireball, slam the door, that all of a sudden there's guys behind you? Then I don't know about that, but I mean, hey, it you know maybe that is how it is. That's fine. It makes sense because what if you withdrawed in uh, like the third round of combat? Like let's say um, you know we wake up a bunch of goblins in here or kobolds here, and 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 we attack us, and there's just too many. There's 14 of them or 30 of them, and so in the middle of combat we have to retreat. Well, this is a bad example. There's no door. Let's say here where we have to retreat uh, or withdraw rather. You know, it would make sense. You know, because it's third, fourth round of combat that maybe some more people came down the hallway or whatever. So. Getting into this here, we're going to start here, we come down these steps, we read passage number one. You step down the stone stairs and enter the darkness of the kobold's lair. An unnatural sense of dread permeates the air. This is an old spell that protects the cave from nosy intruders. Each character must save versus level two fear or suffer a negative one when attacking any kobolds until the end of the adventure. A blessing spell will remove this condition. This feels like a way to nerf my cleric. So at level two... Let's see here. Well, we all got higher than two, so good. Each character must save versus level two fear. Okay, so we're good. We barely, barely. The rogue is not so sure. <laughs> the rogue is not so sure. Everybody else is used to this kind of climate here, I guess, right? So we're in here now. Now, the question is, how do we go through this? We remember it said that we have to, uh, you know, revisit rooms that we were in before, right? Uh, and roll for wandering monsters. So my question is, like, is this a room? Is that a room? Is this a separate room? I have no idea. Like, is room 16 this giant thing? Is room 7 this whole area? No. Well, this whole side, this riverbank, um, is one this whole area? I have no idea. So to, to, to cheat a little bit, I'm going to just glance at the first couple of words of, like, section 7 and 16 here. Right. So this one immediately says um, the word river is in the first, like, a uh, couple of words. So I'm, I'm going to suggest that that's probably a different thing. I don't know why they just didn't draw the map here with lines like you would if you were drawing it. It would make it so clear to me. But it's not. So then I need 16. Just, just so that we don't make any huge mistakes. The second word is door. So I think that this applies to just that door only. So I have to assume, because remember it said we can skip these rooms, that this corridor is just one big area. And this one is actually on the steps. It's behind the steps. I wrote it in front so it would fit on my camera screen here, right? So that's just us going down the steps. That one is not really here. It's back here. So we overcame our fear, walked in, and have to decide how to go through this. Now, since we already know the layout of the map, maybe the goblin that came back to town kind of gave us a rough description of what this place looks like, right? This is, this is, you know, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, God, I don't know. This is a mess hall. This is where they're eating, right? This is the barracks where they're all sleeping. Maybe this is being dug out by their slaves or whatever, and this is like a, a gem mine or something. You know, maybe this is a, an armory, right, or a pantry or something, right? Maybe something, I mean, what do you put in these little closets, right? Maybe they're jail cells, right? Now, I would assume the jail cells are the hard, hardest things to get to back there, right? I imagine this is we have to fight our way across the bridge, right? Um, I imagine that uh, this is a throne room, right? This is King Dingling up here, and this is where he hangs out. We've got to, you know, go fight the the head kobold or whatever. Uh, maybe maybe this is where they sleep. You know, maybe maybe this is where they 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 sleep uh, in this room. Um, you know, who knows? Who knows? Maybe this is a jail. Well, that wouldn't be a jail. Maybe this is a secret passageway, a jail cell that, that connects to a different jail cell. Who knows? Um, but we know that on our way out, we, we have to roll for wandering monsters because this is, if this is the main hallway of the kobolds here, we're going to run into them periodically as they're moving from the throne room to the pantry, to the armory. Like they're, they're doing kobold things, right? Checking on their slaves or whatever. So, so it makes sense to me then, I guess, that this is one big room for us to worry about, you know, running into multiple enemies in. So, you know, whatever's, who, who knows what's going on in this mess. So, so let's, um, now we know we have to escape as well. So it, it doesn't make sense to me to like crisscross my way through. Yeah. Right. Unless, unless, unless we do this whole bottom portion before, like what I'm thinking of is like the end of the mission, or do we just go up one side over and down the other and then we're out? I actually kind of feel like that makes 
the most sense and I am prone to going to the right because I'm not only right-handed, but you can't go wrong when you go right, right? So, <laughs> so let's go this way. Let's come into room number six and just see what it, just so that we have a plan, right? There is a pool of fresh water in this chamber. You may decide that one or more of your characters will drink from it. For each character who does take a drink, roll on the pool table on page 21. Decide before looking at the table. I love that it says that. Decide before looking at the table. I really appreciate that. So I, I'm afraid of drinking random water in caves, right? It does say a pool of fresh water, but maybe, we don't know, I love this already, I love this. We already don't know what's making these kobolds angry, and I don't want to do in the first room, drink from a pool of water and have one of my guys lose their, you know, get brain worms, uh, and then they're, they're, they're walking through the dungeon the whole time, you know, I'm the peanut butter man, you know, talking to themselves or whatever, singing, never gonna give you up, you know, as they walk through. I don't want my guys to lose their minds in this place, right? So, oh, this is funny. I didn't think I was gonna need them, but I brought them up here. You see that I have dry erase colors. I don't have any dry erase markers, but you know who does? My six-year-old, so I went and stole these. And so this said, what a pool of fresh water. So I didn't think I was gonna need them anymore, but I thought it was cute to be able to draw little trees and some water, and here we go, I'm drawing a pool of fresh water water there we go and now i'm gonna put a little checkbox here that we didn't i don't think we're gonna do it right why why would i give myself that negative i mean it could be a positive but like a, a fountain in the base game heals you right nobody's hurt yet we're all fully healed right yeah four six five four three yeah okay so let's bail on this room and come back to the main room here and we're gonna roll to see if we get jumped by wandering monsters <gasps> Of course we do, right away. So then we have to remember the Wandering Monsters, D6, 1, 2, 3. Um, it says, okay, well, we, we got to find out what we find, a 2. So it's page 20, Vermin. Chapter 1 and 2, Kobold Caves Vermin Table. Okay, so let's let's do it. All right, so we have, so this is, like, I don't want to put this on screen, you know, like, like this is fine, you're not copying this out of it, but like, I mean, like, the, the big fancy, I'm not going to pull up the, the chart, I don't think. So this, uh, oh, I mean, it's the same crap, right? D6 plus one giant centipedes, level three, no treasure, any character wounded by a giant centipede must save versus level two poison or lose one additional life. So we have three giant centipedes, okay, I'm going to write that, uh, so this is a, did it say a minion? No, this is a vermin, right? Oh, that's lame. It is a vermin. Okay, so it's a vermin. And I need, what did I, I roll? A two, so three giant centipedes. And they are level three. No treasure. Oh, lame. Okay, so no treasure. Uh, giant centipedes. Any character wounded by just a level two poison. Okay, so LV2 poison. Got it. And then there's, oh, I messed up. And then there's there's only three. Okay, so we're going to draw, for some reason I drew six. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm going to put these guys on top just to see if this makes any sense here. Can you see that? Right. Oh, it's upside down. Oh, forget it. I skipped one thinking I'd put the giant centipedes in a spot you could see, and I've got it upside down now. Forget it. Okay, <laughs> so here we are. Giant centipedes, uh, they attacked us, right? So wandering monsters get to attack first. There's three of them. They're going to leave the mage out of this. Centipedes are not angry at any anybody on our team, and they're only level three. So it looks like the cleric is going to get smacked around. They have no treasure. So any character wounded has to make a save versus level two poison or lose one additional life. Now the dwarf has a two plus two. So he's got a four. That's more than three. The rogue rolled a four plus two. So she had a six. So she's good. Uh, but our cleric definitely got hit. For one, and we got to do a poison check versus two, so that should be okay, right? Like it just has to be the number or, right? So I think I think that that's fine. That was a save. It does say save versus, right? I think we've I've only seen one trap before, right? So I just want to make sure save save versus roll a d6, adding any modifiers as instructed. If you roll the target number or better, nothing happens, and that makes sense. This is a vermin. This is a very low end creature, right? Level two poison or lose one life. Uh, additional life. So we only lost the one life on the cleric. What happened to... Oh, here. So she goes from five down to four. Okay. Now we are going to attack... Um, 
Ooh, we didn't get our shield benefits there. So she definitely got hit. The rogue was okay. Yeah, okay, we were okay. We didn't get our shields there. Okay, so now I think all four are just going to try to bonk these guys. Okay, right? We get no shield and they have no loot anyway. Okay, so what's going on here? So we missed. The rogue has a three minus one. So the rogue... Oh, no, they're outnumbered. So we're actually at a, at a three even. But... Uh, yeah, so wait a minute. So we killed one. This is a two plus one, so we're at a three. So we got two. Oh, and there, so all three of them died in just the one round. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. So the way this would work is one hit, one would hit, and then they'd have to make a morale roll before I rolled for the other characters. Uh, so they would run. So we killed two, and then the last one ran away, just so that I have this correct. I have to get in the habit of not shortcutting things because I don't, I don't like doing that. It, I like doing it, <laughs> but it makes mistakes. That's the problem. Okay, so that was that was some garbage dudes that they ran away. That's fine. So, yeah, I like the idea of doing this here. Now, what are we going to do here for our... our um... I don't know why I didn't realize this before, but the, the rogue is pretty good, you know? Like, if she can wear light armor, that's a plus one, and then she adds her level, you know, to, to her defense... That's going to wind up really nice when she's in level 2. That's really good. My cleric, on the other hand, is never going to get that higher defense. So um, that's interesting. It makes me want to level up my rogue immediately. <laughs> okay, so we'll go to level 5. I don't know why that just dawned... Or area 5. Why that just dawned on me now. This better be like a pantry or something. Uh, 5. This room... This is a small, like a one paragraph. This room is a library. Shelves hewn from the stone walls are filled with dusty old tomes and scrolls. You may leave it alone or search it, rolling on the library table on page 21. Decide before looking at the table. I love it, right? That's brilliant. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll. Um, and uh, let's, let's just check it once, I guess, right? We checked this once. We can check this once. We can check, you know... Um, sorry, check. I'm saying check once. Uh, search, right? There's no other search. This says we can do a thing. So we may as well, like, do the thing. It says leave it alone or search it. We, we can't just, like, search random rooms. So let's search. Uh, on the table, on 21, I assume it's a D6. Yeah. It said library table D6. We have a 6. Library table D6. 5 to 6. The character finds a scroll containing a clue... And a random spell. Use the random spell table on page 47. The character finds a scroll. Oh, I never declared who would do it, though. Or was I supposed to? You. It says, you may leave it alone. This room is a library. Shelves hewn from the stone walls are filled with dusty old tomes and scrolls. You may leave it alone or search it, deciding on the library table, decide before looking at the table. Oh, but anyway, in the book, there is a whole thing about, like, what if you die and you want to, like transfer your thing to another character like you would have told them the secret so i guess i just get to like choose uh clues and dying characters clues are discovered by a single character but we can assume that he shared the clue with her companion so if the character dies you may move the clue onto another character's profile interesting so um i'm gonna go ahead and just say it was the 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 party leader anyway we used his die and rolled the six anyway so we're gonna give another clue to the dwarf Sweet, he has two now. Uh, but then we rolled a magic, uh, a magic thingamabob. So let's find out. We're gonna give that probably to, unless it's a blessing, it's going to the mage. So we're gonna roll. I would love a blessing. We got a lightning bolt scroll. So now we have a scroll of fireball, a scroll of lightning bolt. Good deal. All right, I'm liking this place already. It's been good to us. Okay, so we come back out here. And we have to roll for creatures, wandering creatures, little jerks that we find. In, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, you all see that spinning around too, don't you? Oh my god. Okay, so here it goes. What are we fighting? One, two, or three. We have to look at this chart. Ooh, this one's different. This is a demonic minion now. Uh-oh. So, oh, that's different. That's on page 18. Oh, this is exciting. 18. I love new tables of stuff. Okay, so 18 demonic minions table, chapter 1 and 2. Okay, so let's see what we find here. We have found... Where did I can't, I can't even see it. It's a 4. Okay, so again, didn't I roll a 4 last time? D... Oh my god. Demonic cold... Why am I writing them all up here? Okay. Oops. Demonic... Kobolds. And remember, kobolds hate... 
This will be our fourth minion for this group. Kobolds hate the dwarf, right? Kobolds equal dwarves. Yep. Okay. So we have, uh, what did I say? D6 plus three? So that's not so bad. <laughs> Four. <coughs> Four demonic kobolds. Okay. All right. So um, level three, normal treasure. Okay. Level three. Treasure, normal three treasure. I want to. I gotta make my own one of one of these. Like I, I, there's just like I, I want to do that differently. Um, okay, so level three normal treasure reactions. Uh, D six flee if outnumbered. Fight or fight to the death. So none of that can happen because there's four of them and four of us. So I guess we're just gonna go ahead and deal with it now. They jumped us, so we have to remember that we do not get a shield. I even wrote it on here. Um, okay, so they are three, so they are going to roll these three against my party. We have only plus one, plus one, and plus one for our def Oh no, the rogue gets plus two because she doesn't have a shield. Okay, so the rogue is really a five. I'm going to change these so I don't make any mistakes. This is really a six, and this is really only a, a three, rather, plus one, so a three. So really, the these are the this is what it looks like. Um, and they're level three. Yeah, maybe this works out better for me. Just mentally, I can look at that. I can compare the demonic kobolds versus the three. Everybody was able to to uh, to uh, to to pull it off, except for our cleric here, right? Because if she rolled a three, our defense have to be higher. So she's going to take another damage. So she's going to go from four to three hit points. Oh man. Okay. And there's there is only three, right? Yeah. There's only oh no, there's four. I'm dumb. <laughs> It was a D3, or a, it was a 1 plus 3 is what it was. Okay, right. So the attack against the mage, she defended. Okay, so now we get to attack. We all get our shields back. They attacked first without our shield bow. Okay, I did do that correctly. I'm just, I can't count. Uh, so we got to roll a 3 or better to hit. Um, <laughs> okay, so it's all in the hands. <laughs> uh, so and doing it this way is probably not the best because, you know, there's how many, so when, when we kill the first three, so right, so there's there's a, a five plus one is there's a six. So that's gonna kill two just from the dwarf, right? So that's that's gonna kill two. And then I guess in the interest of speed, if you're better at this game than I am, doing it this way is probably okay, uh, but but I don't know. So then, so then we got a six plus two, so six, seven, eight um, is gonna kill the last two. So the, 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 the cleric, Womped the last two before they had a chance to like even escape right uh, or even make a morale check So these two technically never had to roll uh, But in the interest of time it makes it easy to just throw them all and just work your way down um, Unfortunately in certain situations like a boss fight that could change things So I like to slow it down because maybe the mage just wants to try to bonk them right Maybe the mage wants to throw down that fireball or lightning bolt now, right? Uh, the the old Hadouken Fireball, right? Okay, so demonic kobolds, they have regular treasure, it said. So that's cool. They get to roll on the treasure table. I wish I knew if one of these D6s was more prone to sixes or something. Oh, look at that. Uh, so <laughs> uh, because then I would make that my treasure die, right? Uh, so that did just say regular treasure, yeah? I even wrote it on there. I just want to double check some. Okay, normal treasure. And we rolled a six with the red. So that says one random magic item from the magic item treasure table on another chart. So magic treasure is on the left. We're gonna roll a d6 again, and we have a four, which is, oh! Uh, you know what, it has funny, I've never actually read beyond whatever I roll in this game, so I was thinking to myself, honest to God, I was just like dreaming about this game, thinking about the, the playthrough here. How do you get like good weapons in this game? Like I don't remember seeing magic weapons. We just found one on a wandering dude. Magic weapons gives plus one to its user's attack rolls. This is a permanent magic item. That was my other concern. Was like, does it go away? Oh, and we don't even know what it is. So this this jerkwad <laughs> kobold or whatever it was, demonic kobold had a magic weapon, and we don't know what it is. <gasps> I don't want it to be a bow. I really want it to be a four or five, dude. Come on. How funny! I didn't want it to be a bow because you know why? Nobody in my party can use a bow. Ah, uh, well, no, I mean, I guess the, the dwarf can, so we'll give it to him. Magic bow. Magic bow plus one. Uh, it, oh, that's so funny. Plus one. Magic. I mean, that's sweet. That's awesome. I'm stoked. I just wish I could use it. But nobody, I needed, I needed a sling for the um, rogue. I don't even see sling on there. 
Okay. Oh, that's ah, that's so cool though. But we got magic items. I'm excited. Okay. So I mean, let's just keep going here, right? All right. <laughs> so let's see what <laughs> what thirteen is. I'm more excited over the one experience point. You know, it's not a point, but it's like a. It was number four in the kills. So uh, thirteen. That I am a weapon I can't use. <laughs> 13. A troll lives here. Oh, dear. And he is a greedy weapon collector. If a rogue is leading the party... Sure. I should put my rogue in the front, right? Didn't I just say that? If a rogue is leading the party into this room, he must be... in it Because that's how you disable traps and stuff, too. You know what? Rogue, you get promoted. When you're level 2, our, we have new marching orders. Until then... We're, we're doing this number. That'll be new marching orders. Until then, we're, we're, we're doing what we had, what we've always done. Dang it, I can't believe that. Uh, let's see. If a rogue is leading the party into the room, he must be in the front uh, rank of the marching order. You catch the troll unawares while he is polishing his sword, giving you a plus one bonus on your first turn. So we don't have that because we don't have a rogue leading our party. So troll, level five bot. You know, I'm gonna write all this stuff down on the bot. I skipped over a spot thinking it'd be easy for you to see on the thing and it's not. So level five, troll, boss, level five, count one. Okay, um, two attacks, let's write two. All right, we have a, uh, ooh, this is garbage. Crushing weapons have a negative one attack against the troll. We have two people using crushing weapons, so negative one crushing. All right, and then uh, every turn the troll attacks roll a d6. On a four or five, it regains one lost life. On a six, two lost life, but never exceeding the original four. I appreciate that it calls that out because that's a question you know you might have. Uh, if brought to zero or less life points, roll a d6. On a three or better, it comes back to life with one life point only. Unless a character can attack it with a slashing weapon when it is on zero or... Oh, wait. On a three or better... Wait a second. Hold on. If brought to zero or less life points, on a roll a d6. On a three or better, it comes back to life with one point only unless a character can attack it with a slashing weapon when it when it is on zero or less life points so it's kind of just like the normal troll it does not make any regeneration roll on a turn after it was damaged by a wizard's fireball reactions one through four ask the party for um a bribe party must surrender all of their weapons including extra weapons i appreciate that they point that out any weapons carried in their backpacks on a five to six fight to the death. So either way, we're giving them everything, including our new magic bow. Uh-uh, son. And then uh, treasure. So I'm not even going to read the treasure yet. We've got a fight. We've got a battle. We have a battle to do. So I'm also going to put down here D6 equals four or five. And then six is plus two HP. So they're going to heal. This way I didn't skip over a spot on my monster chart either. Okay. Oh, that sucks. Okay. So, troll boss level five. Oh dear me, what are we gonna do here? We are going to. So we get the. We don't get an attack bonus, but we we don't get our our clubbing bonuses either. I didn't. Oh my god. And we don't have. So at, we actually. That means we actually have. The 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 cleric is at minus one. The rogue is at minus one because she has a light hand weapon, a dagger, and the mage is at minus two. But this is a boss. Who's susceptible to fireballs it sounds like so let's go ahead and slow this down instead of rolling it quickly um i'm just going to charge an attack i'm not going to try to do anything fancy here we're going to roll a four so we got a four plus one it has five it's level five so the dwarf is going to do why does that keep happening to me one damage one point of damage okay good job dwarf all right so then we have the uh I mean, I guess we just go in order for this one. Let's have the cleric roll. The cleric is at a minus one, so she misses no matter what anyway. Uh, the rogue has a dagger, which is a, at a minus one, so the rogue would have to roll a six. We got a four. Minus one is going to be a three, so that's not good enough. And the mage is going to cast fireball, right? So that we can do a one, uh, a one. We can do, we can do some, some big. No, let's cast. Do we cast lightning or fireball? Let's cast. Let's. I don't know now. Um, let's. <laughs> let's cast lightning bolt. A four. So hold on. I got to erase her her lightning bolt, not from the scroll, but like her memorized spell. 
Um, and then how does Lightning Bolt work? I don't. I, this might be the second cast I've ever made in this entire game. Uh, Lightning Bolt. This spell works like an attack roll. The wizard adds uh, her level to the roll. So that's a five because she's level one. Against a group of minions, the spell will kill just one if it hits against a boss. The said boss troll, it inflicts two life points if it hits. So what happens there now? So this is an interesting question. Does the boss now go down to level four? But then it gets to roll for a regen. So the boss is going to roll for a regen. You know it's going to roll a six, right? And get all those hit points right back. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That's a nothing. We rolled a two. So it didn't regen, so it doesn't matter. My question becomes, if it heals up, does it gain its level back? And see, there's a perfect example. I don't know how that works. I've never seen that written anywhere. Somebody needs to tell me how that works. Um, okay, so it's down to level four. Now it gets to attack me. It has two attacks. So let's, uh, it's going to go against the, I guess the cleric and the dwarf. And oh God, we, we failed miserably on our defense. So both characters are gonna get hit. So the cleric is down to two and the dwarf is down to five. Let me change that. Okay, and um, wow, dang. All right, so now, so we already rolled its heal, it failed. We get to go again. Uh, it's not down to zero hit points, right? So we're gonna we're gonna start at the top of the of the combat. Dwarf three plus one is a four. Not good enough. <laughs> uh, oh wait, no, it is. It's only level four now. Oh, right. It's a boss. It says so. It's now not level five. It's now level four. So the dwarf hits it for the one damage, which should kill it, right? Right? Okay, hang on. That was page 13, or entry number 13. 13, 13, 13. A troll lives here, so wait a minute. What do we have to do? On a three or better, blah, 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 one life point. Unless a character can attack it with a slashing weapon when it is when it is on zero or less life points. Oh, so then there are rogue has to, that was the wrong die, but the rogue has to, I don't think they have to roll, it just says they have to attack it, yeah? There's a question, on a three or better, it comes back to life with one life point only. If brought to zero or less life, roll a d6. On a three or better, it comes back to life with one life point only, unless a character can attack it with a slashing weapon when it is on zero or less life. So, unless a character can attack it. It doesn't say that it has to like make a successful attack. I think we just chop it up just like regular trolls from the sounds of it. When it's on zero or less life points, it does not make any regeneration roll on a turn after it was damaged by the wizard. It sounds like that's a regular troll thing, I think. I, I think that we're good. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go with that, because that's how all trolls work, is, is somebody has to use a slash. It, it's not a roll, you just have to have somebody there with a weapon to do it. I think that's how that works. So, good news is, we killed ourselves a troll boss. Oh, and I, I skipped over the treasure part, the most important thing, right? <laughs> uh, so what have we got here? We have, uh, I need a bookmark or something, I'll, you know what? Okay, there we go. Uh, treasure, the room contains a D6 plus one non-magical weapons. So we rolled a six, so seven regular starting weapons, which is good because you know what? When we find those invisible gremlins, which I'm sure we're going to, they're gonna run out of crap to steal. So we have seven non-magical weapons of any variety or type as desired. We can take all of our starting guys' uh, equipment. Um, however, on a six, ugh, roll again. What? However, on a six, roll again. <laughs> That's so lame. Okay, because it carries on. On a six, roll again. On a five or six, one of the weapons found is indeed med. Oh, so we, oh, if we're like super lucky. Yeah, see, we weren't. So if this was a five or six, one of them would have been magical. On a five or six, on a D, uh, it says, however, on a six, roll again. On a five or six, one of the weapons found is indeed magical of ancient elven make. Treat it as if a four was rolled on the magic treasure table. Uh, on defeat, upon defeating the troll, the party gains one exp, uh, one experience roll. Okay, so we we only found, so so our our six didn't count. It sounds like, and we only found a d six plus one. So it sounds like we found three non magical items. That could have been incredible. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an extra axe. We're gonna take an extra mace, and we're gonna take an extra dagger right just so that we have them in our inventory just in case stuff happens right good enough for me then it said make an experience roll so now 
Who gains experience? I think it needs to be the mage. I feel like the mage... You know what? I like the idea of the rogue. Because she could lead the party. She could be in the front group, right? I, I, I kind of I kind of just had the thought realizing, right, and she would have plus she'd have higher defense than the cleric at the same level. So but then the cleric it, it, can the cleric use I'm gonna have to just check. Can the can the cleric use the uh where is it? Like a bow or something? Cleric allowed weapons. Weapons allowed. Oh, so they can use a sling, though. Hand weapon, two-handed weapon, and a sling. Interesting. So perhaps I'm going to give, instead of a dagger, we're going to take a sling and give it to the cleric. So the cleric has a sling as well. Okay, and then the wizard. The wizard could only use what? Weapons of light and a sling. You know what? Maybe I'm not taking an extra mace. Maybe both of those guys have slings. I never even considered that. Okay, so we have three slings in the party now. Yeah, yeah, let's do that instead. With our D3, we found an axe and two slings. So maybe instead of an axe... <laughs> how funny, I just completely undid everything I thought of. Let's take a... Um, it, it, didn't it say just like non-magical weapon? So a starting weapon. What's the other one that you can start with? A... Uh, can't you start hold on it's under dwarf let me find it here it's easiest to just find it under dwarf starting equipment or a heavy ar um you can actually start with heavy armor and a two-handed weapon which is kind of cool but i don't like it but i want to take the two-handed weapon right two-handed weapon slashing plus one uh, and, and only so that we have a variety of things in our, our arsenal here, right? So, so yeah, I like that idea. I like, I like breaking up what we got. Since it's free, why not? Let's, let's take something useful. Now, oh, we have to roll for a level. Everybody's waiting for the exciting part, and I'm dinking around with free gear. It's not free. It's like four gold. Um, so, yeah. So, I really want the rogue to level up, but I really want the mage to level up. Um... Let's see who rolls higher, and then I'm going to choose that person to take the EXP roll. So the mage rolled a six, so the mage gets the experience roll. She did drop the lightning bolt and rolled a six. She deserved that level. So our mage is now level deuce. Okay, level two. Level two mage, whoop, level two mage gets, uh, goes from three to four hit points, and she was maximum anyway. So four hit points, and she also gets another spell. I may as well just, you know what, give her another lightning bolt spell. Why not? Okay, good deal. So we have a level two mage. That's all done. Proceed. <laughs> um, okay, so let's, uh, yeah, and I, I filled out, yeah, I like this. This is, now that I don't have a gap in there, we did our experience roll. The demonic, demonic, demonic kobolds. Wait a minute, we're on to something here. Maybe these guys dug deep enough and they found like where the game Doom takes place, right? They dug down uh, <laughs> and they're, we're going to find a cyber demon down here or something. Um, so do we just go from 13 to 2? Because if we go here and here, we have to roll a wandering monster. That doesn't seem smart. So let's go up here to 2. This is exciting. This is an armory. Guarded by... Uh, guarded by six kobolds counting as level 3 minions. They are armed with flails which wrap around shields. Oh, what jerks. Oh, yeah, right? Uh, when defending from their attacks, your characters may not enjoy any defense bonus from shields. Great. Uh, reactions, D6. So 1 to 3 is a bribe. It says 10 gold pieces total. We only have 13 gold pieces, so I kind of don't want to give all the money to these guys. Uh, 4 to 5 is a fight, and 6 is a fight to the death. And then it says something about treasure. So um, it's an armory. We're going to get more loot, it sounds like. More gear that we can sell in town for a gold piece or two. So it's funny, I have to think about this, and I might have been going about this, you know, all wrong. This is, you know, not like, what do they say, like D&D, &D, like murder hobos, just go in here and kill everybody, right? I want to, I want to, like, play this more like an RPG, right? Like, maybe we do just bribe them. Is it worth trying to fight six dudes? But you know what, they're level three, and I also want the experience, right? Do you get experience? I don't think if they, um, if, if they flee, you do that. I am 100% sure about, but bribing off the top of my head, I don't think that you get any experience for it. Um, I don't know. Somebody's going to have to correct me on that one. I'm really not sure. I'm gonna, I can look it up in the manual, but I don't have a keyboard up here to search for it real fast. So I would have to have 
Um, I don't know where it is on here. Marching order. When do monsters attack? Who is attacked? Running away from a combat. Oh, maybe it's in there. Let's just take a look real... F no, because it's under, like, reactions, right? And I don't see it in here. Fleeing monsters... Bribe. There. The monsters ask for a bribe, a fixed or a random amount of gold as shown on its reaction description. If you pay the bribe, the monsters will leave you. If you do not, you cannot pay and they fight. But yeah, I don't see I don't think I don't think you get experience for that. I think fleeing yeah, see look under fleeing you get their treasure, it says, and everything. So under fleeing, do you still get the experience? Maybe did I mess that up too? Is that something I don't know? You may, let's see, flee. The monster turns tail and flees. The monster disappears from the game. You may not loot his body. You don't get loot. I thought you got experience. Huh. Oh, no, these are reactions. These are not, I'm not, what I'm looking for is, like, not that. I'm not looking for flee. I'm looking for, well, I guess it is flee. The monster asked for a bribe. I thought for sure. Man, I'm going to have to read this. Now that I've played this a little bit, I want to read the book over again. Oh, here. Uh, the remaining minions will... Here, this is interesting, too. Uh, D6, whole group, three or less. Remaining monsters flee. You perform one morale per encounter unless says otherwise. Cowardly or courageous modifier. Some monsters never roll morale. This is indicated. Fight to the death. Ah. <sighs> Bosses are tougher than minions. They have multiple life points. I, I could have sworn in here somewhere. It said... Huh. You may not chase them. You still gain their treasure. So it's like, it's like different. Fleeing monsters that flee disappear from the game. You may not chase them. So this is like in combat, right? You may not chase them. You still gain their treasure. Um, I thought for sure it said something about experience here. Kill... Uh, because you killed some of them and you won the encounter is what, how I think it were. Man, I, it's in the problem I have with this whole book is that it's in here. I've read it. I just can't find anything because of the way it's put together. Ah, that's, that's page 20. Minions are encountered in large numbers. They are classed as minions or vermin. The only difference is that vermin do not give any XP points when you defeat. There's no period there. Them. Then there's just this picture. Uh, <laughs> minions have one life point each, and each successful attack, when attack goes multiple times, it does more than one wound. This means right. Oh wow! Why can't I find this now? I feel like I'm cr taking crazy pills trying to look through this book. It is so just laid out weird. Okay, so now I've even forgot what I was doing. Fighting kobolds. Let's just write this down. Okay, what is this? Room two. Uh, six kobolds, level three. So uh, level three, six. Kobolds. I'm, I'm just gonna fight them. Forget, forget trying to bribe these guys. We we are gonna go in and do the deed here. We're gonna we're gonna do them dirty. Uh, kobolds counting as level three minions when their armor flails a wrap around shield, so we get no shield bonus. Um, they are level three minions. So this is a minion. So I'm gonna put a little five there. So if we can kill these guys, that's our dude. But we don't get our shield bonus, meaning. We only have plus one defense on our on our dwarf, right? Because he has a shield there, shield there, so only plus one here, no shield. So our rogue, again, man, I screwed up. Our rogue is again the best one um, with odds of defense here and a zero. So it's one, one, two, zero for our defense rolls. Wow. Okay, but we are going to attack first, and I'm just going in guns blazing. Let's see how the um, melee stuff does first, right? Let's uh, we we know that we're just gonna poke at him, but I do have a fireball on hand if we need it, so. Uh, the dwarf is going to go in with a plus one, right? It's just a negative to our defense. So a plus one on a four is a five. So we managed to kill one right away. I don't know why I put this here. So we killed one kobold right away. So there are one, two, three, four, five. I forgot to fill in the little pips on the sheet here. That you can see oh that's there we go that way it's not upside down on the the little kobolds here okay so that's what we've got all right so we killed one so far um we're gonna need some sixes guys there's an awful lot of kobolds in here let's let's see some damage Ooh, that's only a three plus zero so we didn't kill oh they're, they're level three yeah 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 so we killed one more all right, so the rogue, and this is a room, I presume, so we're gonna go ahead and take the rogue who's a negative one to their attack. 
Got a four minus one is a three. So we're going to go ahead and kill a third out of the six. And the mage, um, I mean, we could drop a big spell, but I think I'm feeling pretty okay. So let's just go ahead and have that mage try to bonk him at the negative one. No, the mage misses completely. There's only three left. Now they're going to attack these three characters. We're going to leave the little mage alone, although I feel like we should leave the cleric alone. She needs to heal. She's down to two hit points. Okay, so the, the defense is as such. This is a fail. This is a fail. This is a success. Okay, because that's a three. That's a three because we're only plus one to our armor, not our shields because they have the wraparound flails. What a bunch of jerks. So the, the oh my god, the cleric is at one hit point. And the dwarf is at four. Oh dear. Four out of six and one out of five. Okay. Next round of combat. We are going to again have to slow this down. We're going to have the dwarf attack first. With a three plus one is a four. So we killed one more. Now that will also bring them down to only two left. And they now have to make a morale check. They run away. Okay, so they ran away, that's good. Now, before I do anything else, we have to have the cleric cast heal on herself. So I'm gonna use one healing on herself and she rolls to heal, geez, what is it? I put it on the spell table. Uh, a number of life points equal to d6 plus her level. So she has to cast it first though. So she has to roll a, higher than a one. Oh my God, come on. Oh, it's gonna roll a one, are you serious? So we're gonna try to cast it a second time on ourselves. Come on. I have never been able to pull this off very well. Just don't roll a one there. So we healed and now we have to roll two. Oh, is it that roll? Was it a three? Uh, I want spells. A cleric may use the healing power three times per game. The power allows the cleric to heal. Oh, it's like an attack roll, I'm sure. So um, yeah, okay, so I guess that's a three then. So three, uh, 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 this power allows the cleric to heal a number of life points equal to d6 plus her level. The cleric may use healing at any moment, but, but she may not attack. It's like an attack roll. So I guess it was that three I rolled for the success on the cast, right? So three plus her level is four, taking us from one to five hit points, which maxes her out. Thank goodness. It only took two, two healing power spells to do that. Unbelievable. Okay, so we're sitting pretty good here. What did the rest of that room say? Treasure. The uh, okay, so treasure. The room is filled with. Sorry, I'm looking at other stuff. The room is filled with weapons. You may take a d6 plus two non-magical weapons of any variety or type as desired. But as the kobolds are small, you will not find any two-handed weapons. If a flail is used by a party member, it simply counts as a crushing we hand weapon with no additional benefits. Uh, so, I mean, we're taking the loot, right? <laughs> it's just just because. A d6 plus two. So we found seven. Five, six, seven. So we found seven. I'm just taking all the loot out of here, man. This is like D&D &D all of a sudden. This Monty Hall stuff. Non-magical weapons of any variety or type as desired, but they're all small. So we're going to take one dagger, two daggers, three, an axe, four, a Sling, five, um, did I say an axe already? An axe, I think I did, I did it. So now we have three axes, five, six, seven. We'll take a, a mace and a staff. All right, we're just, just, just in case we have all of our crap stolen again, since that, that seems to keep happening to me, this game hates me with those stinking, uh, uh, the, the, they're not goblins, they're gremlins. What did I get here? What did I, I'm sorry, I got some weird notification that was, was begging for my attention here. Oh, that's not for me. Okay, got it. All right. I know it's, it's like Kickstarter delivery season. And so, so I've got, uh, I, we just got, uh, to how exciting today we got uh, from the Seventh Citadel, the lock in your address email. And then like last week, a lot of people started getting, um, what's it called? Sleeping God's Distant Skies, you know, stuff like this. Uh, and so I've got uh, tomorrow, I'm looking forward to a, uh, a package. So. So expect an unboxing video tomorrow with any luck, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so that was cool, right? We fought some uh, some jerks. 
in room number two, an armory, right? Um, yeah, okay, that's too bad we couldn't take their awesome flails that, that like let us like be janky. Okay, so back out into the hallway here. Let's not roll a one. I feel like these dice hate me. You know what it is? They're probably like really well balanced and they're random enough that it feels like I'm all over the place. Okay, so we've cleared out this whole side. Now we have to make a choice. Do we clear out this side? Um, oh, you know what I just realized? I just realized something here. We don't have to go up here and then down here. We can go up here and then up here because this is one long hallway. We can just start here and go up and then like, this feels very much like wrapping it up. So now we have to use some real, real engineering here. So <sighs> we're in a good enough shape to where we still don't know why these these kobolds are, are, are messed up. We still don't know where Elvin is. I've got a good feeling these answers are back here. And my concern is, is what if we start going through this just like we went through that? And we have the problem of like fighting the, like a troll boss again or a bunch of little kobolds and we get wrecked before we can get out here and go in to see what's going on. Does that make sense? Right? So I almost feel like 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 we kind of stick to the original plan and we just circle back around, right? Because we'll, we'll have to go seven and then I guess these and up here and back and over here and up and back and then back. There's a lot of wandering stuff going to happen to us, right? But if we can survive all that, and I feel like right now might be the best opportunity to survive because we only have one healing spell left, then we can come down here if we need to. Otherwise, if we find our answers, why not just come out of here and leave all this for a second playthrough one day? If we're beat up, if we're styling when we come out of here and we're not any more, you know, in trouble than we are now, why not come back out and clear the place out? Let's do that. Let's go to seven. Your party's advance is blocked by a fast-flowing subterranean river. There are three options. Cross the river on a rundown wooden bridge covered in mysterious writings. That sounds like a spell, yeah? Uh, two, try to ford the river. Oh, this says read 15 if I go here, and if I ford the river, 14. Oh. Three, only if you have a wizard. You can investigate the strange writings on the bridge. This is awesome. I have a wizard. I'm going to go to, oh, yeah. 17 isn't a number out here, so let's go ahead and check out 17, since we have a wizard, right? Uh, 17. If you gained a clue this adventure, oh no, you may spend it to know about the mysterious writings on the bridge and you automatically pass the roll. <gasps> wow, if you have not gained a clue this adventure, roll d6 and add your wizard's level. So the wizard didn't gain a clue, if any. On a 5 or better, you decipher the writings. If your troll fails, go back to 7 and choose another course of action. Well, I guess we didn't gain the clue, right? If you gained a clue in this adventure, you may spend it to know about the mysterious writings on the bridge and you automatically pass the roll. If you have not gained a clue in this adventure... Oh, if you've not gained a clue in this adventure... Oh, I see. Oh, oh, oh. Well, the, the, the mage didn't. Okay, so... Do you have to spend it? If you gained a clue, you may spend. No, 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 no. If you have not gained a clue in this adventure, roll d6 and... Okay, on a five or better... Oh, but we don't lose the clue. No, it says spend it. We do lose the clue. That sucks. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not gonna roll a five or a six, so let's just spend the clue. <laughs> let's just spend the clue. I'm not gonna roll it. Let's 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 do that. If you gain a clue this adventure, you may spend it to know about the mysterious writings on the bridge and you automatically pass the roll. If you've not gained a clue this adventure, roll d6 and add your Oh, and add the wizard's level. Our wizard's level two. On a five or better, so we could actually roll a three. You know what? We have really good odds. I'm keeping our clue. You know what? The dwarf is keeping the little secret of the, of the weird writings to, to himself. We're going to, all we have to roll is a three or better, right? For our mage to, to decipher the writings. Go to 18. Okay, we can do this, yeah? Three or better, let's see it. Hoo -hoo! Just barely, our wizard, without a clue, goes, you know what? I think I've seen this before somewhere. I've seen this, I've seen these jerks before. <laughs> um, okay, right, at her level, which is, she's level two now, we leveled her up. So three, four, five, on a five or better, you decipher the writings. 
go to 18. The wizard is pretty sure that the strange swirls on the bridge are some sort of defensive runes. They could be a trap or an alarm, and he and she knows no way to disenchant them, so probably it's better not to walk on the bridge. Go back to entry 7 and choose another course of action. And entry 7 said that we can get wet. We can take on uh, 14, right? Try to ford the river. 14. I don't want to mess with the defensive stuff, so 14. You try to ford the river. Try. I don't like that word. But the current is too strong. Each character must save versus the current, which is level 3. Dwarves and halflings roll at negative 1. Barbarians at plus 1. Uh, those who fail are carried away. A character who is carried away loses one life, banging against the rocks. What? And, and rolls again versus level 3, losing one life on each failure until he manages to cross the river or he dies. What? And you have to do that both both directions, I imagine? What the heck? Why can't I? Like, I have a rogue. I have a rope. Can't I, like, you know, like, swing across? Like, make, like, a like a thing? I guess I don't have, like a like, a grapple on the end of it, like a... Like some kind of grappling hook style thing, right? Let's see here. Okay, so each character must save versus the current, a level three current, and dwarves at a minus one. So we need to see some 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 threes are better and a big on the red one. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Come on, mage, you can make it, you, you weakling. Oh my god, look at these amazing rolls I made. I I wow! We made it across the river, right? You know what? All that Oregon Trail paid off. <laughs> Dwarves and halflings roll at negative one. So even the dwarf rolled a five. And then nobody got carried away, so it was a strong current. But we made it across. So that's what the 14 and 15 are then, right? Um, okay. Right? Uh, you try to ford the river, but the current is too strong. Right? So let me go back to where you read it. That's seven. Like, or do we read 15 now? Cross the river... On a rundown wooden bridge covered in mysterious writings, go to 15. So we don't think we do that. You try to ford the river, but the current. So we're just on the other side now. So 15 should have been written here, and 14 should have been written here, I feel like. But I, I guess they do that so that, that you get surprised when you get to entry 7, I suppose. Okay. A character who's carried away until he manages to cross the river. So now we're on the other side. So, so again, sticking with our plan, we're going to go that way. So we go to 12 now. Let's go in this room. Oh my god, this is like an entire page. Elvin! There he is! The old adventurer. You know what? I think this would be actually... <laughs> you're going to hate me. This is a great... I have to step away for a second. And that's a lot of words. I'll be back very quickly. <laughs> All right, where were we? Oh, right, that's right, right at the big part here. Let's see. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, it was better taking care of it before and than, than rather than in the middle of this, so I apologize. Hopefully, the little cutout here section won't be too long. So, okay, uh, we've we've stepped in here to area twelve here. Elvin, the old adventurer, is in this room chained to a wall. Eight kobold slave masters are tormenting him with their whips. When you enter, the kobolds turn to you and demand a ransom of 200 gold pieces to free Elvin. If you do not, or do not have that amount of money, if you do not accept, or do not have that amount of money, they will fight and strike first. The eight kobold slave masters are level four minions. Oh my god. They are armed with swords and whips. When defending against them, and your defense roll is a one, the whip disarms you and you lose one life. If disarmed, your following attacks will be at negative two. Or, if you can spend the turn readying another weapon, if you have it... Oh, good. That's probably... Oh, that's good. They they kind of set us up for this, huh? Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, or you can spend the turn readying another weapon, if you have it, or picking up your original weapon. If you retrieve your original weapon, a kobold slave master will gain a free out-of-sequence attack and try to hit you as you kneel to pick it up. Make a defense roll at minus one. If you roll a one on this defense roll, the kobold has prevented you from picking up the weapon. Holy smokes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, um, <clears throat> I don't know how many weapons we can carry, but I've got, uh, we're, we're pretty well okay here, right? Uh, if you roll a 1 on the defense roll, the kobold has prevented you from picking up the weapon in addition to the one life, one life damage inflicted. The slave masters fight to the death. Oh, and the rest of this is like treasure and other. If you defeat, yeah, so we're not gonna, we're just gonna, we don't have to, who has 200 gold at this point when you're level 1 or 2, right? Does that happen? Does that happen? Do people do people do that somehow? So here's what we need to do now. What in the heck? Okay, so there are eight. 
eight minions, six kobold slave masters. Oh my god. All right, and they're level four, and there's eight. So one, two, three, four, five, and their, their thing will drop here after the five. Oh my god, they're armor, swords, and whips. When you're defending, your defense roll is a one. A whip disarms you, so um, one equals disarmed. Okay, and then we'll we'll just have to like check the the, the rest of this out later. So wow, wow, wow. <laughs> okay, uh, like I, as it comes up, like I'll I'll check on like the gaining the weapons. Like it doesn't look like we're gonna need to because we have other weapons on us. So I'm not gonna need to bend over and have anybody pick up a weapon. What we're gonna do is just grab it. You know, whoosh, we have other stuff here. Like our our mage is out here looking like Donatello, right? She's got two two bow staffs out here crisscrossed on her back. So I think that we're gonna be okay. Uh, out of sequence, attack and try to attack you. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do that. I don't think we're going to need to do it. Um, but they're going to attack first, it said, and they will strike first. Oh, buddy. Okay, and there's eight of them, so they're kobold. Uh, okay, so right now there's an even amount, so everybody's going to get attacked. But our dwarf is going to get specifically picked on. Should we have probably healed somebody before we came in there? Yeah, the dwarf probably should have got healed. That's a bummer. Okay, so we have, well, hey, um, only two people got hit, I think. Let's see. <laughs> uh, so the dwarf gets a plus two defense. So so they're, they're level four, right? Yeah, they're level four. So these were, these were safe. Um, these are both plus twos. No, so we're good, but that was only the first half. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. The rogue is uh, still safe. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> Okay, so the cleric is fine. The rogue is at a plus two, so she is not fine because they are level four. So all three, okay, but she didn't get, okay, oh my god, but she didn't lose her weapon. So the rogue gets hit going from four to three. Wow, okay. Then these two both get hit for her damage, but they're just, they're just going to not be able to attack. That's phenomenal. So three and three, they're both at three hit points. Wow, okay. Maybe not a bigger, as big of a problem as we thought. Okay, so now it's our turn. So we're gonna just grab a weapon from our backpack, right? Like, like, or like, you know, we have the axe slung over our shoulder, right? We have to spend the turn readying another weapon. So I think, I think that the dwarf is going to go ahead and grab just the axe and, and ready it up, so so that we have nothing for the dwarf this round. The cleric, on the other hand, is going to roll. We got eight dudes to kill. Come on, hit him. Oh, a six. That's exactly what we needed. All right, I like it. So we're going to do six. Twelve. Oh, please. This is what we need to see. Twelve. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. That's awesome. No, we're not going to do it again. Come on, come on. We're going to get like a two or a one. Yeah, so, so 12, 13, 14. So that was good. That was really good. That makes up for the dwarf, right? So 14... And they have, what, three hit points? So we killed, uh, no, no, four hit points, I'm sorry. So if we kill three of them, because they that's three, that's 12, we did 14. That's too bad she didn't have a plus one anywhere. <sighs> They're not undead. We only add half of her level. So if I leveled her up, she would have been plus one here. But instead, she had a 14 divided by four. <clears throat> gives us 12. Okay. So we have to we have to we have some work to do now. So there there was a big six. That was awesome. Now for the rogue who was at a minus one anyway because of the dagger is a three minus one is a two. So she's gonna miss. But now we still have the mage who yeah she doesn't have her stick anymore. But you know what she's got fireball. So let's let's cast fireball <laughs> again. Let's let's I don't know why I keep trying to cast spells. I keep failing miserably. So it's gonna be this plus our level so this plus two come on let me hit with a fireball just real big i just want to see it happen nope we're gonna roll a two so we got a four <laughs> oh. <sighs> right because it's plus two <clears throat> so our level so it's a four plus two is the spell works like an attack roll the wizard adds his level to the roll so that's four so they only had yeah four hit points so i only killed one guy against minions Fireball slays a number of creatures equal to the wizard's die roll minus the level of the minions, right? So that was only a, a four minus a four, a minimum of one. So we, we killed one whole creature with that. Uh, but that's okay, you know, like that's better. That's half of them down. Half of them down. Now they get to attack us back. What a bunch of jerks these guys are. 
I can't believe that. <clears throat> oh, let me think here real quick. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. She doesn't need a, a staff to cast. She casts it from her hand, so I think we're good. Okay. And then the, the dwarf never attacked. He readied up an axe. So now we're getting attacked just once again. So no ones. Oh, come on, cleric. <sighs> okay. What are we going to do with this? Okay, so we've got, and they are level four, so the dwarf is a three, four, five, so the dwarf should be okay on a defense roll. The cleric is now disarmed. The rogue has a four plus two, so four, five, six, right? We didn't get like a negative, like when we fought these jerks, right? They didn't have a wraparound flail. They just, these guys just just are, are hateful little, little jerks. So, um... Yeah, who can disarm us, but we didn't get dis See, little little things like that are cool. Okay, so we did not save, though, right? No, this, yeah, she's a plus two, so that's that. we're fine there. We're fine here. We're not fine here, and this two is a zero, so we're going to take a damage, but we're not going to, like, get disarmed or anything, which is fine, because she didn't have a weapon anyway. So she's down to two. The mage got hit. All right, so now it's time for some payback. Now, the mage still can use a scroll... Uh, if we need to, but we're going to see here. So the dwarf is going to roll now. Uh, the dwarf is going to roll with the, the other axe that they had. And then at the end of the combat, I'm just going to say this now, we're going to pick up our stuff. So the dwarf rolls a 5 plus 1, which is a 6 minus 4, puts them at half. Did I see anywhere... Well, less than half. That means there's only 3 alive. Did I see anywhere where they they don't run, right? Aren't they, aren't they fight to the death? It says they will fight and strike first... Um, the slave masters fight to the death. Okay, so we don't we don't have to worry about about this. That's that's out, right? They're not they're not running away. <clears throat> okay, so the cleric is going to instead of they can't attack because they were disarmed. Actually, you know what? Forget it. Yeah, the, the cleric is going to grab their weapon because we this is going to go more rounds, I'm sure. Then we're going to have the rogue at a negative one roll. Uh, so a four minus one on that little dagger is not good. E oh, wait, we outnumber them now. Yes, there's only three. So we outnumber them. So that's just a flat zero. So she, she hit. That's a four. I always forget that. So she, she hit with a four then because she is not at a minus uh, one anymore. She is with the dagger, but she's at a, at a zero. So a four plus zero is still a four. So we killed another one. Oh, good. I always for feel like I'm forgetting her, her bonus. So the rogue killed one. Then that leaves... Our mage, who does not have a weapon in her hand. I did not pick up a weapon, yeah. So she could punch at a negative two. So she'd have to roll a six. That's not gonna happen. I say we use the scroll of fireball. Let's just let's just, you know what, we carried it in here, and maybe that's just maybe that was fate. Maybe that was meant to be. We weren't level two, we were all level one, but we did have one clue and a scroll of fireball. So here goes the scroll of fireball. This is going to be a plus two, whatever I roll. So it's a four plus her level, which is six. So six, um, and then it's it's minus four, right? So we only killed one, right? Fireball does not affect dragons. Used against a minion, fireball slays a number of creatures equal to the wizard's die roll minus the level of minions. Wait a minute. Fireball slays a number of creatures equal to the wizard's die roll, which was six, minus the level, which is four. So did we kill two? I think we killed two with Fireball. Oh, maybe I'm reading, okay. So I think we killed two because that's a six minus their level is four, that's two. There's only two left. I think we lit them on fire. Hopefully we did not singe Elvin's hair at all. Whew. Okay, everybody picks up their weapons again and resets to the way that things were. And then I think before all that happens, our cleric is one final time going to attempt to heal with our last healing power, the dwarf. And we're gonna add what do we add to this? Do we add anything to it? No, it's just, it's, oh my god, we failed again. I hate this game. I can't ever heal. Why? Why is it just my healing rolls that fail with ones? Ah, every time. I think not every time. That's four out of six. Okay, great. Um, from yesterday, it happened two out of three times as well as it just happened. Now, that's so lame. Ah, <sighs> treasure. The kobolds have a potion of healing and a random treasure determined by rolling on the treasure table. Page 34. Upon defeating the slave masters, the party gains one XP roll. Okay, 
So what does a healing potion do? Is it on here? I think it's a magic item, yeah? So let's see. We might just quaff that right now. Potion of healing can be swallowed. Any oh, it's a full heal. So maybe we give that to the, to the dwarf just to have it. Potion of healing. Just so that the dwarf has it, because the dwarf is most likely going to get out. Healing all lost life to a single character does not require an action. You just, in the middle of combat, huh? Usable one time by all classes except barbarians, which is why I'm not playing a barbarian, because I would forget something simple like that. Uh, so <laughs> that's more insurance for me not screwing up rules than it is a dislike of barbarians. I think they're cool. Um, let's see. I just I just want to try to cut down on the mistakes. And then and then what? One random magic item, right? So we got to roll again, or not magic, but one treasure item, right? Uh, let's see. And a random treasure, yeah. Random treasure. A potion of healing and a random treasure. So treasure table here. Come on, big six. Oh, good. We got a one. We found a D6 gold pieces. Yay. Uh, we found five gold pieces. Like, how would anybody have 200 gold? I guess if you came in here later. So what did I just get? Five. So we go from 13 to 18. I actually feel like... I actually feel like I should be less gold than that. You know what? I'm going to take... So I'm going to go from 18 down to 10. Just because... I have two lanterns I put on these two new characters, and so I, I would have had to pay for that, which we would have had the money for. I didn't find any other money in this place, um, but I forgot. I had 13 gold, so I should have actually paid out 8 at some point. So so 13 minus 8 is 5, plus the 5 I just found puts my dwarf for 10 gold. I think at least that way I'm on the up and up on all my gold. I think I didn't do that. Okay, um, and then an experience roll. So now what? Now I'm a little angry because our cleric could certainly use the plus one to attack that she would get. But I think having the rogue, man, I really like the idea of the rogue the more I think about it. Having dodge, because dodge is sweet. Ooh, that's good stuff, right? And that makes her suddenly better. Yeah, let's have the rogue roll. You know what, the rogue, or you know what, we, let's do it like we did it last time. Whoever rolls higher gets the roll. Oh. So we've got, okay, you know what, just like last time, this, the, 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 the mage got the roll, she got the six, right? So let's see here. Does the cleric level? Yes, she does. I'm going to fix this. So she goes to six and six from five and five hit points. She is going to increase by one level to two, and I guess that's all she gets, huh? Oh, well, she's going to get plus one attack now. Okay. Plus one. Oh, my poor rogue. This is going to be a mistake. All right, so let's keep reading. This, this is the exciting part. Yeah, here I am fooling around with game mechanics. Uh, if you defeat the Kobold Slave Masters, your mission is not yet accomplished. You must still free Elvin and walk out of the dungeon alive. Unfortunately, after searching the fallen kobolds, you do not find the keys to the, to the manacles binding Elvin. Freeing him will require a rogue passing a lockpick against level 4. If you have no rogue in the party, or if the rogue fails, you have to smash the manacles using... A crushing weapon. Each attempt requires a roll of d6 or better. Dwarves and barbarians add their level to the roll. Warriors add plus one. Whenever you roll a one during an attempt to break the chains, the clanging noise will attract wandering monsters to the room. Okay, so holy smokes. So and the, 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 so the rogue doesn't get their plus one. It just says passing a lockpick against level four. So we have to roll four, five. We have a 50% chance of this happening. We failed horribly. So, like, it's just too advanced for us. Okay. I love rolling ones, don't I? Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Um, okay. So now, dwarves and barbarians can add their level to the roll. What am I supposed to roll? Each attempt requires a, oh, a roll of six or better. Oh, crud. Oh, my God. We could be here for a million years. Okay. So, here, so I have to roll this. At a plus one because our dwarf is only level one. And get a five or a six, or we have to fight something. We could be here forever. Five or six. Yep, that's a one, baby. Look at that. Wow. Of course it is. What else would I roll? <laughs> okay. Uh, so what wandering monster table did we find? Oh no, it's this, Demonic Minions, and they are on page 18. <laughs> oh god. Okay, this is unbelievable. I can't believe that. Alright, god. Okay, 
So this is a minion. This will be minion. Oh, so wait a minute. Were the slave masters bosses or minions? Wait a second. Because maybe they don't count for my... It says level four minions. So I wrote them down as a, as a minion here, minion six. But then we got an experience roll. Upon the defeat of the slave master. So that's like double dipping. I don't feel good about making them minion six. Like that was more like boss level. So I'm gonna I'm gonna erase that six and just put them down as a as a as an XP. Like I mean as a boss, I guess. Um, and then I'm gonna put this guy as a six. Okay, so 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 what are we fighting now? Demo we got to roll on the on the demon table here. Wow, I can't believe this. We got to get you out of here, buddy. All right, and we got a two. This is a D6 plus... Oh, this is... Oh, I've seen these guys before. Uh, skeletons or zombies, 50% chance. So one, two, and three are skeletons. So we have... So a D6 plus three skeletons. So we have six skeletons. Okay. Six skeletons. Oh my goodness, what are these guys doing with skeleton? What are these kobolds doing down here? Level three undead, no treasure. Of course not. No treasure, skeletons, crushing weapons attack at plus one, I'll probably forget that. Skeletons never test morale, always fight to the death. So there's six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, skeleton jerkwads. They get to attack first. So, and they're what, level three? And we don't get our shields this first round? Yippee, 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 yippee. Oh, good. Ones again. Man, I am just th throwing rocks tonight. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be a three, so that's not good enough either. Uh, and that four is the only save. <laughs> so we got... Um, we got we got all this damage coming in, and then we're still not done. So the dwarf is down to two hit points. The cleric is down to five. The dwarf is going to have to drink that healing potion, and the rogue is down to two. And then we still have two more skeletons, so they're going to roll against the dwarf and the cleric. The cleric has to be rolled against because monsters, undead, hate clerics, right? There it is. Okay, so the cleric is getting rolled against, and I guess the dwarf? Um... No, let's let the rogue. I forget the rogue doesn't have a thing. So the 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 we'll do this. We'll do the rogue and the cleric, and the and the rogue is it's still plus two. I forgot. So the rogue got a four really. So the rogue is good because she's still at plus two. She doesn't have a shield. I forgot. Oh, but of course the cleric got wrecked. Oh my god. Okay, so the cleric is down to four. Have you ever seen such great rolls? It's amazing. Okay, so come on guys, you only need. They're level three. They're level three little little jerks. Let's go ahead and do this. Dwarf first. Let's just get a six and wreck him. No, we got a four. So the so the dwarf is going to kill one. The cleric uh, rolled a four as well. So she's going to kill one. Now I really wish I had. Fireball, don't I? And the the rogue is at negative one, so the rogue is gonna get whatever that is. And now, what do we do with the mage? I mean, we don't have any more fireballs. We've got two lightning bolts and a sleep, so I think we're just gonna have to bonk them. Oh, so the rogue is actually gonna hit. So are they outnumbered? No, right? They way outnumber us. No, we're even, so the rogue doesn't get anything. So the rogue is at minus one, which is a four, which still kills one. So we're down to only three skeletons, and I guess the mage is just going to try to smack one, yeah? And miss horribly. So they're going to attack us back. There's only three, so I think we're going to leave the... Uh, I guess we're going to leave the mage out of it. We'll just see what happens here with these three. There's only three skeletons left. Um, well, that's good news for these two. They saved. Had the cleric fair, plus two. So she's at four. Um... Because this is round two, so we do get our shields. So she got a four, right? So she's good as well. Thank goodness. Um, okay, so now we got to attack back. Uh, we're going for threes or better. There's 
that's 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 actually a six. That's five plus one. That's two more dead. Okay, I forgot. He has a plus one now. Okay, so that's oh, and the crushing weapon. Oh, I forgot she had a crushing weapon, and so did the the, the other one. Uh, so that's one and two. So there's one skeleton left. Remember, remind me, she has a crushing weapon, so this is actually plus two. Oh yeah, so she did it. Okay, so we're good. We're good. We got all the skeletons dead. We get absolutely nothing for it. Oh, they're... Those were minions, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're minions. They're minions. Okay. No treasure. I'll never test morale. Okay, here goes again. We got... We got... So I don't want that to happen again. I think we're just going to have the dwarf drink the potion of healing right now to go from two to six hit points. Because we could lose this any second now just from trying to break these chains. Because we have no choice but to roll a five or a six right now. Oh my god, thank god. Okay, because I, I would be very, very bummed out if this was so lame. I just sat here forever banging away on this thing. <laughs> okay, so that was 12. All right, if you fail, whenever you roll a one on, a, on an attempt to break the chains, the clanging noise will attract wandering monsters. Yeah, okay. Okay, so of course we did that once, dwarves. Uh, if you have no... So, so, so what, we just have like another dude now? Okay. So I guess that dude hangs out with us. There's my D3 for the dude. It doesn't really say what else to do. So, I mean, really it seems like now we walk out to this side of the bank and have to roll for wandering monsters, I guess? Right? I mean, we can't rest up, we can't do anything. And now I'm afraid to go in here because we're almost dead. Of course. <laughs> a one. Wandering monsters. What do we got now? We've got a four, so it's back on the demonic minion table. And we've got ourselves a skeletons or zombies again, huh? Okay, so it's either skeletons one through three or zombies. Oh, it's zombies this time. Okay. So this is minion number seven. Zombies. And they are level three, undead. How many? A D6 plus four zombies. So eight zombies? Oh my god. That's a lot of zombies. I mean, we could die just fighting this garbage. I don't want to get killed in here. So that's five, six, seven, and eight. Oh, I think I rolled... Did I roll for too many skeletons last time? I might have. Oh, <laughs> oh whatever. Because uh, there were six, not eight. How many How many extra rolls did I make? I, oh, no, I did it. I probably did it right. It was just the two, maybe? I don't know. Okay. Zombies. Crushings. Okay, so the crushing doesn't count. They never test morale. They always fight to the death. So here we are again with no fireball. Um, and they were wandering monsters, so they get to attack us first. And they are level... Oh, they're level three, not level four. All right, so level three. I need fours is what I need. So of course we've got we've got two guys taking damage and two guys not taking damage. So okay, so the dwarf is gonna go. Thank God I drank the healing potion from six to five, but now the mage is down to one hit point and we're out of healing spells. Grand. And then we have to cross the river again. I mean that's never gonna happen. Or or do we? Like I don't understand. How do we cross this thing? Because people are going to die in the river. That was just the first round of their attacks. The second round of their attacks. Oh no, look at this. So the, these two got hit. These two might have gotten hit as well. They get no shields. So this is a four, so we're good, right? Because they're only a three, right? Did I mess that up last time? And she got hit too. Oh man, okay. So here we are. So the, the cleric is down to three. Come on. The mage is dead. The mage just died. She had one hit point, so she is dead. Our level two mage, dead. Fabulous. And the rogue is down to one hit point. We're not going to make it out of here as a group of level one dudes, are we? No, we are not. Okay. So that was round one. We got one dead mage. We're just going to have to leave your body behind. If we win this fight, maybe we can steal all your gear, including your lantern, uh, and put it in somebody's backpack and your scroll of lightning bolt. Uh, so, I mean, there's nothing I can do. I have no abilities. It's just straight down to rolling dice at this point. Uh, so the dwarf is going to hit first with a six. Uh, 11 plus one is 12. And they have what? Three hit points. So, wow, we just killed four. So we just did pretty good. One, two, three, and four. Uh, there's that. And now we have a 
a, uh, oh, well, this was a two plus one, which is a three, which still kills one, it looks like. That's good. I feel like my brain shorted out and I got messed up on the, the defense roll versus the attack roll last time. And then we got a four, and we do outnumber them when this roll happened. because Oh, no, we're three and three now because we have a dead body. So we don't outnumber them, so this is really a three, which is still barely a hit. Uh, so we're going to do one more. So there's only two of them alive. So they're going to attack. Uh, wow, that's a defense plus two here. So we're good because she has a shield now. All right, so now we get these three attacks on them. All we need are a bunch of threes. <laughs> okay. We killed one. And now it gets to attack, and since undead hate the clerics, we're going to roll the one attack against the cleric, which saves, and then we just have to get one three or better to kill them all. There it is. There's there's some hits. Okay, so they're all dead. Unbelievable. Wow. Do they even have any? Oh, they have no treasure, right? That's right. These guys are worthless. No treasure. Dang it. Okay, so now what? Do we have to, like, cross the river again? I don't understand how to get across the river again. You try to ford the river, but the current is too strong. Each character must save versus the current, which is level three. Okay. So, uh, I guess this guy's with us and has to save now as well. So maybe we'll just make him yellow and everybody needs a three or better. Does he have hit points? There was nothing in there. Maybe he's getting carried. Uh-oh. Can the, can the six, like, save the one? <laughs> Uh, okay, so so we've got three people that made it. However, the cleric, she did not make it. So something happens now, right? Those who fail... Um, yeah, this was at negative one, by the way, for the dwarves, right? And halflings are at negative one. Um, but she failed. Lose one life banging against the rocks and rolls again versus level three. One... Oh my god. So basically, she keeps rolling until she dies or rolls a three or better. A character who is carried away loses one life, banging against the rocks, and rolls again versus level 3, losing one life on each failure until she manages to cross the river or she dies. So she's down to two hit points. So we got two dice. We got two chances to get out here, get out of here with an alive cleric. We just need a three or better. Good. Oh, my God. Okay, but now what? So it is seven a different area than this? I feel like it probably is, just the way that it was kind of broken up. I really don't know. So let's just see. We don't want a one. Oh, for Pete's sake. Come on, hurry up. All right. <laughs> All right, so then I, I feel like this is a different section, just because something happens when we get there. So maybe this is a different section. And then that's probably our last roll, because... All of this can can go away. I, I, we're gonna die. We're minus. We're down a mage. Okay, so now we're what? We're on our way out the door. Maybe we catch one on the way out. There is a number one there. So I feel like it's a different area. No whammies. <laughs> on our way out the door, the adventurers ran into some vermin. Just something else. It, it's not clear, so I don't know what to do. Like, is it just do this and then you get out? Was this necessary? I don't have any idea, so I'm just doing it that way. Like, I feel like having to do this and then these were different sections. I feel like this is a super giant long hallway that three rolls is not so bad, maybe, right? <sighs> Page 20. Of course. Man, I wonder how many ones I roll playing this game. We got another one. <laughs> 2d6 rats. Level one, no treasure. Can our guy fight? I don't think so. So 2d6, so there's seven rats, huh? Vermin, seven. They're level one. Rats. Rats. Okay, and there are one, two, three, and four. One, two, and three. Okay. And they jumped us. Now I don't think this dude is in combat, so like I don't think he counts as a as a an actual player. Like maybe he's just hiding in the back or something. There were like no stats or anything for him. There was nothing. There was nothing there that told me what to do when we got him. So uh, yeah, you must still free Elwin. Is there? Did I miss something? No. No, it just so he's free. Maybe he, maybe he ran out in, f in front of us. I guess I don't know. Okay, 
that's that's where we are. So we're about to get attacked by a whole gang of these idiots. And there are how many? Seven. Uh, they're level one, so basically we need a one to fail. Okay, and then who gets the extra hit? Okay, so we didn't get hit by the rat. So everybody's just going to attack the rats, and we just need not a one, really. So there's, ooh, so there's, is that really it? Was that seven of them killed right there? Like this, this, this hit? They only have one hit point. What a waste of time. <laughs> right? Because this killed four of them. This is a three plus one is a four dead rats. That leaves three. Then she would have attacked and hit five. So that's, that's, that's a bunch of dead rats. We're out. I think that was correct. Hopefully I did. I can't believe we didn't go through the left side. However, if I was level two, would have been a different story, right? We'd be much more powerful and maybe... Maybe we could have cleared out all of this. Maybe the story is completely different. Like next time if I ever play this again, I'm going this way first, right? So there's two things here. And this one has a word on it that I don't recognize. So I'm going to just cover it up for now because I don't, I don't think I read any of whatever this is. This says ending the chapter. You may, uh, uh, you, if you manage to exit, exit the dungeon and bring Elvin to safety, select a character to make one XP roll. You know what? Rogue. All you need is a two or better. There it is. Okay. You gain more by defeating the zombie. What? What? Oh, there was a lot in here that we missed. Listen to this. I almost don't want to blow it. You know what? So I think right now you can stop the video if you don't want to hear what we missed. In, in fact, I kind of don't want to read it, but I feel like I have to. Wow. Uh, I have to because there's, I think, something that might pertain to us, something that we did do in here. Um, oh, that's too bad. We should have gone over here and drank from the pool, too. Um, dang. Uh, there was a lot in here. Let's just say that. So I think that now is a good time to quit the video if you don't want any spoilers as to what might have been in here. If you just don't care, I'm going to read the rest of this last paragraph because this is awesome. Uh, if you manage to ex exit the dungeon and bring Elvin to safety, select a character to make one XP roll. You gain uh, more ex uh, more by defeating. I'm gonna let's see the um, there's another boss in there. Let's say that right, and then slaying the there's another type boss thing in there, and then this one says slaying the troll, one XP roll, and slaying the kobold slave masters. So I so I think that there's. Over here, there might be other XP rolls, but I don't think we, we just get these rolls. If you manage to exit the dungeon, select a character to make one XP roll. But then it says, you gain more by defeating other things. I But it, like, it almost sounds like we're double dipping, because we already did our experience roll here, right? Slaying the, man, uh, slaying the, the troll and slaying the kobold slave masters. We made those rolls. You gain more by defeating the... Huh. Let me, you know what? I bet I can figure this out. I really don't know. It's just not that clear. Nope, that was not what I thought I was going to find. Okay, so I'm just glossing over to find a very particular word. <sighs> Upon defeating, okay, the party gains one experience roll. But then here at end of the chapter, oh, there's all kinds of stuff on this side. Holy cow, we missed a lot. Wow, <laughs> this is awesome. I mean, we barely made it through with some level one, one, one dudes. I just don't understand this. If you manage to exit the dungeon and bring Elvin to safety, select a character to make one XP roll. I did that with the rope. You gain more by defeating the blah, 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 blah. But I think, I think this is awesome. We already done it, but maybe we shouldn't have done it in the middle of combat. I don't actually know when that XP roll happens, and I can't tell if this happens as just like bonus rolls. It doesn't feel like it should just be extra rolls, because let's just say one of these guys probably gives you two, four rolls. That doesn't seem right, right? So maybe maybe they're just pointing out what you could have got if you went through the whole place. It just feels weird to me, but I don't know. I'm going to have to to figure that out. So I don't want to be too spoilery other than there's some more XP rolls over here and one of them is big. Apparently we made a good, oh, we never even went up here. Oh, how funny. I, I forgot all about it. I was going to, we were there. I was going to go through it. I was just so scared. I wanted to get out. All right. Well, that was, that was a lot of fun. That really, really was a lot of fun. And so just to, just to pull this up again, uh, this is, 
Uh, a $2 PDF you can get from uh, right here, Caves of the Kobold Slave Masters from Drive Through RPG. Uh, you could go ahead and uh, download the, uh, the the PDF for two bucks. I believe you can get a printed copy of this somewhere. I don't know, probably Lulu.com maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, two bucks for an adventure, and and I can easily a go through this one again, and b it, there's three scenarios here, right? This was stage one. So then we have a whole other part to do uh, for chapter two. So I'm excited to see what happens there. But uh, I'm going to try to figure out what happens with those experience rolls. I'm going to not forget to level up my rogue real fast. And then I guess we have to uh, whip out the cloning machine again and uh, find ourselves another uh, mage's sister. <laughs> but now she'll only be level one. So <laughs> here we go. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. This has been... Uh... What is this? Let's see. I was going to pull up the Board Game Geek screen for it here for us, just so you had this. There we go. Uh, Four Against Darkness, Caves of the Kobold Slave Masters. This is Chapter 1. Sorry I'm so bad at this, but uh, that was a lot of fun. Hopefully it was entertaining enough for you. And remember, games are made for everyone's recreation. We'll see you next time.